Alright, this is a test playthrough of a soon-to-be-released game by Tiny Battle Publishing called Stout Hearts. Um, the game is near finish, uh, but I will still make the usual disclaimers that uh, this is still not the final version, so <coughs> rules, graphics are uh, up to change. Um, but the purpose of this playthrough is to show uh, the setup of the game, process and then uh, work through at least one or maybe more turns of the British player. Uh, this is a solo game just for uh, British. British are playing it. Here's the uh, summary here. Commander 5th Battalion, Wessex, Wessex Regiment, I believe that's a hypothetical regiment, tasked with breaking through German front line in coordination with two battalions on your flanks. You have four infantry companies, three up front, one in reserve, uh, and the game rules control the German forces. And <coughs> the starting point is here for the British. <coughs> and they're going to move through this map and try and uh, they'll get victory points <coughs> for these hexes here and these here. Three and five, they get victory points for destroying German units and getting <coughs> them off the board. Uh, let's see. And then here we have these outlines. There's three lines of Germans. The outpost line is in blue. Um, the main line are marked in yellow. And the reserve line is marked in red. <coughs> and the reserves <coughs> are potentially there to provide counterattacks. Um, there is a process where the Germans, when <coughs> the British take objective hexes, the Germans can launch counterattacks as run by the system. So with that said, <coughs> I'm just going to jump to the setup. I apologize whenever I start one of these. <coughs> I start coughing, but eventually I get over it. So we're going to go to setting up the game here, 4.2. <coughs> and as we go through this, let's see. Yeah, there it is. So you start first. Um, three companies, and I'll bring up the Italian Ops boards. I've already put units on it, so this isn't a true setup per se, but I'll explain how I got to this point. So as we move through here, first you make a die roll to determine the strength of each of the four companies, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta of the 5th Wessex. <coughs> and the way you do it is, <coughs> here are the numbers. If you roll a 1, here at 6, that's pretty much depleted. 2 or 3, you're here. 4, you're here. 5, you're here. Six, you're here, and if you look over here, um, you can see depleted, average, reinforced, strong, full strength. <coughs> and as the British take objective hexes or engage in assaults or experience counterattacks, they can take losses. <coughs> Those are recorded here um, as the company overall strength. <coughs> and then this role they can do to regain their strength. So, I've already made the rolls, and as you can see, uh, didn't roll well. Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie were in the 2 to 3 range. I'm sorry, Alpha, Bravo, Delta, <coughs> and Charlie was uh, got into the 4 range, or the 8 here. <coughs> so they're reinforced, but everybody else appears to be average at this point. <coughs> so I've done that roll. Um, let me move up here, follow the process. Place companies in starting positions. Four companies. Um, I don't think I can hide pieces, but I'll try and show it to you. <coughs> Left, center, and right. Okay. And these, of course, correspond to here. Left, center, and right. Okay. And each company is made up of three platoons. Um, here we actually have the company major also. And we've got this. These are those. These are those. Now this guy's reduced. I'll, show, I'll tell you why. Or static is the word we'll call that. But same thing. We've got the major. We've got the major. And one platoon is put in the reserves here. That's what we got here. This is the reserve. They're not on board. You have to roll to see if you can call them forward. Um, and they've got their own major. And then there is, of course, the battalion commander, light colonel, 
and he's off board initially too. He can come on board to motivate the majors in case they get stuck or slowed down. So I think we've done that. And then uh, just how did I pick this? My strongest company apparently is Charlie Company. And I put Charlie in the center. And then I put uh, Alpha and Bravo and Delta is in reserve. Alpha on the left, Bravo on the right, Charlie in the center. Okay. All right, so the next step is interesting. Assets can assist you in combat. The back end of the rules include information about all the different assets. But at start, all the assets start the game and the assets available. And here in the setup, allocate assets to each company's allocated ac assets box. And that's what these are. Okay, so here, down here are the available assets. Here we go. And all of them started there. As you use or as they suffer losses or whatever, they can go to assets expended. <coughs> and then to bring them back, you have to roll a die and they potentially can come back to available. Or they can go over to destroyed or out of commission for, this, for the length of the game. So that's correct too. So I allocated my assets. Now uh, there's a special rule with uh, Churchill tanks. But you see I've got Churchill tanks. Got a carrier platoon with uh, lots of light MGs. Got some mortar, yeah, um, mortar units. Um, what's the word I want? Native to our unit. I don't think that's what, organic native. That's what I want. Organic artillery. Got ATG, MMG, some mortar stonks. And what I've done is I've assigned them. I've only assigned them to Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, not to Delta. Dorset Company is an optional rule. Um, and total of five is allowed, three on board, or I may get it backwards. Um, I'll look at that later. Yeah, here it is. Three on board, two off board. But the stonks and the MGs can actually provide uh, uh, artillery fire, so it's not the end of the world. If Well, the stonk will probably be off board, but the MMG can be on board, defensive fire or off board. The ATG is great with fighting German tanks. Um, your FF, FOO, you can't see it in the plop up, but that can do artillery. So what I did, and then we got Churchill's, Churchill tanks. We got five platoons. So I did assign all the Churchill's, okay? But I came out of the assets, I assigned no more than five per company. Uh, I didn't assign any to D company because they're not on the board yet. They have to do a roll. So I'd rather keep the extras down here and available to kind of take the place of expended assets with the onboard companies. So that's good. Place Battalion HQ in the box is our colonel. Determine the fire plan. Um, interesting. This is you you actually get prearranged time barrages. Uh, there's limitations on them. They've got to be I think within two hexes, etc. But you've got to uh, pick the turns ahead of time. And normally there's fifteen game turns. Uh, two game turns between each bombardment. So don't re I don't really want to use it on the outpost line. So you see, and I use the actual artillery stonk markers to mark it because I've got a vassal mod. I can make as many as I want. And so I put one on three, two turns, the next one, two turns, the next one. I don't have any artillery after this. Is that a wise decision? I don't know. We'll find out. I don't have tea leaves. So I've determined my fire plan. The next one is marry up tank platoons with infantry companies. There are five, and I did assign them all. But there is a note down here for each one. Roll 1d6 on a 5 or a 6. Return it to the available assets box. It's failed to arrive at the start line. Whatever, they took a wrong turn. They got lost. They ran out of gas. And you do see two platoons out of the five had that problem, so not all of them are forward. And they will be available to assign, I believe, starting the second turn. Then roll for weather. This affects visibility. Normally it's five hexes, but there is line of sight and blocking terrain. Um, but uh, in our case, we rolled. And then if you get missed on turns two and three, uh, then, your line of, then your range of uh, visibility is two hexes. Um, and in this case, when I did roll it, I rolled something between 1 and 4. So the weather is fine. Normally you indicate it by putting a mist marker 
know if it's turn two, we put the missed marker here. That means this turn and this turn. But if it's turn three, we put it here, and that tells you it's range two line of uh, range to see things. Okay. So I've rolled for weather. Check for FUP, and I always forgot what FUP means. Forward something something. That's in the definition of terms. That's here. Here. Well, forming up place. There you go, right there. So could have just read the chart. Forming up place. This whole area is the FUP. Uh, well, actually, sees three front lines. So, and you have to roll for who knows what events um, for the platoons there. So, for each of the three forward companies, it's going to be three rolls. Roll 1d6. If you roll a 5 or 6, an event occurs. And per perfect odds, I did, didn't did roll it for this one or this one, but I did get a 5 or 6 for my center company. And then I rolled a 1 to 3. And you notice this platoon becomes, they call it static. That means it can't do anything until it's rallied. It just sits there. So I will place it on the board, but hopefully when we get the first turn, um, the company can be ra the platoon can be rallied and participate in the initial attack. So let's see. Uh, set up marker tracks. Zero VPs. Game turn one. Uh, and flank markers. I've got one of them out here. Yeah, there it is. And the flank markers, you do a roll to see there's uh, two um, battalions on either side, one battalion on this side, one battalion on the other. They're making progress in the attack, too, and that's driven by a die roll. And if they ever get ahead of you, you lose victory points. So you want to stay the even or the same. So, um, But they're not, you know, until we get that first successful roll to place them, they're really not on the board. I'll just put them off. Well, I'll put them here. And under the one there. Okay. So, we've done all that. Um, so the flank markers are there. Okay. All right, next we move into German deployment. Um, just so you know, German units are in these resource pots. There's C. Uh, the A corresponds to the first line. B is the main, A is the outpost line. B is the main line, C is the reserve line, and units start in each cup. It's explained here in the rules. First output line, there's going to be eight on the map uh, with uh, some of it on, left over, actually uh, six left in the cup for possible counterattacks. Second line gets ten, three left in the cup. Some of these may move when they're eliminated to the other cup. Third line has five with uh, four left. And we have a total of 36. So we have to place the German units. So resource pot A, and you'll notice it does have an A for that first line, and it's going to go in this outpost line. And this is randomized. There's a unit behind these. It's masked right now. And, uh, oops, I don't think I'm on the outpost line. There it is. That's blue. So I got one, two, three, four, five, oops, don't have the vassal module locking centered yet, six, seven, eight, eight, and in theory there's six left right here. Then we move to the B pot, that's the yellow hexes, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, missed one, eight, nine, ten. This is the main line of resistance here. Kind of looks like forward slope, reverse slope, but 10. And there should be three left there, according to that. Then we go to resource pot C. Scroll up. That's going to be one, two, three, four. Oops. Where did I put them? I think it's there. Five. Yeah, that's a C. 
Oh, I saw the unit. Six. That's not good. I'm going to have to fix that. Put my mouse over the unit and I see what it is. That's a vassal function. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five. Whoops. <laughs> Got a little carried away there. Okay, so there are five. The outline hexes is where I put them. And we've got four left. All right, so I'm going to clear the mood marker. Um, let's see. So German deployment is done. There we go. And here's some initial, the initial outpost line blue, second main yellow, third reserve red. And we just place them, and it looks like I did all that. Yep, a little more explanations as we get into the game. Destroy, yeah, that's some of these, when the A units, when they're revealed, may have a B letter on them. That means if they're destroyed, we put them in the B cup. Or some units, when we reveal them, they have no letter on them, which means they're <laughs> mines. Great, I gotta stop, I gotta look at that one. That's a vassal quirk. I'll fix that. Um, so that brings us into the detailed sequence of play now for turn one. So, We'll start here. British Battalion Headquarters. In this phase you can choose to do one of the following with our Lieutenant Colonel. Keep him in normal operations uh, in the command center. Deploy him forward to support a company on the battlefield. And he did bring pluses to assaults and automatically rallies um, leader units that are static, which could come in handy. Uh, so, And then recover him from the battlefield. If he's on the battlefield, there's a process to get him back here in the command center. Uh, to start, we're going to leave him in the command center. Normal operations. Uh, then if he is doing normal operations, it appears. Uh, take the following. So, yeah, if he's under normal, do these. He can deploy reserves, deploy assets, recall assets, recover assets. Um, but if he's deployed forward, he does this. And if it's he's trying to recover back, he does this. So he can do a lot of things. He's going to be in the command center. Not going to deploy the reserves. Um, on the first turn, we already did in the setup deploying of assets. So not going to repeat that um, on the first turn. Uh, not going to recall assets because we haven't put people on the board. And, and there's none to recover. And here's the thing I warned you about with the recovery. When it's in the expended and you want to recover in a 1 to 3, it's moved to assets available. 4 to 5 remains. And if you roll a 6, it's out of the game. So 1 in 6 chance you'll lose them. Uh, big key with deploying and recalling assets is they've got to have a line of comms back to the start line. Um, we just started the game, so it's not a problem. Um, and deploy reserves. That's the reserve company on a roll of 1 to 3. They get the order and they move to one of the three forward positions. Otherwise, four to six. They're still drinking tea, I guess. Um, we'll see. So if the battalion is deployed forward, he can be assigned with something. If he has recovery, I don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and place these guys on the board. Um, once I've done that, and now I can place them in any way I want here. So let's see. I'm just going to place them first, and then I'll worry about the assets. Uh, let's see. And they can stack um, two to a hex. Uh, we'll look at that later. But what I want to do now is just yeah, give them these. I think I'll put the leader in the front. And the assets available to them are ATG, MMG. That's all I need to bring up. I'm not going to, the mortar can stay off board. Makes sense. So, I guess I'll put the MMG here and the ATG here. Nope, I won't. I'm going to put them there. Okay. Now, we could look at stacking. Let's look at that real quick. Uh, stacking, there it is. I should have just looked at the table of contents. Stacking limited two infantry platoons plus one asset and one company HQ and one battalion. So 
Um, the only thing left for this to stack is I can maybe stack a second platoon if I want to double up the platoons. I'm not going to do that, but only one asset, so that pretty much drives that. So now we ha do have the uh, the on the static one. So I'm going to put him there. I'm going to try to rally him right away. Okay, there we go. We got that in the infantry pool. Now we look in the middle. And the forward observer is a lot better if he's with the leader, so that's a no-brainer. And we can only put three up front, so the question is... Uh, okay, so if we look at this, I can show you the back thing, but I'm going to... It's kind of tough here. Let's unstack them. This gives LMG fire, ATG. Oh, let's have some defense against German tanks. And have a Churchill in the mix. Not necessarily picking the best setup here, but there we go. And then we put the last one in. One, two. I don't think I want the leader there when I'm here. And let's see. They got a stonk. Oh, they got a pair of Churchills. Let's put the Churchill here. Uh, we're not going to use the MG, ATG. Churchill's double the infantry assault. There's a lot of infantry there. And let's... Stonk's not going in. We'll keep the MG. Um, I'll put the ATG here. Okay. So the Brits are on the board. And let's see. C Company has, yeah, two, two... One because some of these got recalled, and the reserve company is still there. So I think we're good there. So now <coughs> going back to the detailed sequence of play, um, the first phase is coming down here. Nobody wants. Oh, we've got the barrage phase. I got to fix that here. Um, and if I had pre-planned barrage, uh, I could do that. But if you remember from here, I went ahead and picked first one on turn three. Hopefully, I'll be up at the main line or in range. Um, is there is uh, two to three hexes in front of a British unit, not adjacent. Um, there can be only one strike marker per hex. Five strikes, so that'll be helpful, I guess, on that turn. Um, then it's the British Company headquarters phase. In this phase, uh, the company's one company at a time, so we'll just move across. If the company is static, the first thing it wants to try is roll 1d6, and if it rolls a 3 or more, it becomes unstatic and can do stuff, unless other units in the company are static, and then that reduces the roll. If the battalion HQ is on with another company HQ, it's automatically, it's kind of like kick them in the pants and get them going. Uh, if it's not activated, that means the whole company doesn't do anything. But, in our case, all our company's headquarters are active. So, here are any or all of the following. So, all of these can be done if needed. Rally a company. Against the die roll shown on the strength point track. If the result is equal to or greater than the target, recover one strength point. Company strength can never exceed its original strength point allocation. So, you got to remember these. So there's nothing to rally. I haven't lost anything. Call forward assets. Again, This that's already happened in the setup. So this is not applying during the first turn. Rally static infantry platoons. <coughs> so let's see. Roll 1d6 against the company. Rally target for the company's strength. Is successful flip. Okay, so we can have to do that one. And because we do have one company right here and that's uh, Charlie company oh and it's a big one that's nice so it rallies on a three or more three or more let's see if it rallies it does so they're in the game they'll be part of the initial ass assault they put their TT whatever aside and they're gonna move forward um, if any ground assets are inactive uh, but now you run the risk of actually it going off board, unlike this one, you know, 
either it rallies or it stays static for the platoon. This one you could. Could have it go away. My headset turned off. I should pause the recording. Um, and then call for fire. Uh, company could call. Well, let's try that um, because I do have something set up here. So the company HQ can call for artillery fire if it is a non barrage game turn, which it is. It's more effective if the FOO is stacked with the company HQ. And we see that in the chart up here. So to do this, we have to roll. Gotta fix that chart. Um, we have to roll on this table. And the first column is uh, supporting fire, artillery called by, successful on, and target suppressed on. Okay, so we want the last two here. So the call is successful, and then it's suppressed the unit. And it's line of sight, so I could call it down on this hex. Ooh, careful, I don't want to know what it is. Or this hex. Um, but first, I got to see if I get it. Um, so let's see. Yeah, that looks good. So let's see. I got to roll a one to four, and all my companies can do it. Company HQ by himself, one or two, so that's not likely. But you can call mortar, and I can call a mortar in too. Hmm, that's good. Um. The company HQ can call for artillery fire, yeah, and I can only do one of them. So basically, it's based on company HQs. Uh, notice the Ford Observer by itself can't do it. So I can only really call three times for this, each company. Um, in my mind, there's nothing wrong with that. So, And if we're calling for mortar company HQ, there's a good chance you'll get it. Uh, so let's try that. Um, let's start over here. And uh, this one is going to call for a mortar. Uh, so I got to roll a one to four. Um, so let's do that. Uh, I did. So let's see what company this is. Hopefully it's one that has a mortar. Yes, it does. And uh, I'm going to bombard this one because it's within two. I'll roll for that in a second. This is one we can get a full barrage. We'll look that up. Uh, but I've got the FOO, so it's a 1 to 4 again. I did get it. Woohoo. So what I'll do is clone and say this is not a mortar stonk. This is a. What do I want to blow up? Probably this guy. And then I got a 1 to 4. Yeah, he's got a mortar. And this, this can be smoke, too, but we're going to see. Does he get his mortar? Yes, he does. Totally awesome. And he'll blow up him. Okay, so now what we got to do is sweep by and decide if there is suppression. Oh, that's smoke if you wanted it. I'll keep these on it if they do succeed in suppression. So a mortar suppresses on a one or two, which helps you in the assault, reduces the defender. Nope. So this goes to assets expended. Um, the full-blown artillery got a one to four. Nope. Wow. <laughs> Vassal die rolling. Um, this is now just an extra. And a one to two. Wow. None of the artillery was effective. I think I put the other one over here. No. Where'd it go? Oh, oh, that's right, he goes here. My bad. So the initial artillery, just called in, didn't really do anything. So now we move to platoon actions. Move, support, fire, suppression, fire, assault. Assault's automatic if you move um, next to a German unit. Um, support, fire. Uh, let's see, if I move, though, I can't do support, fire. I can only take one of the following action. So I can move, or I cannot move and provide support fire, but I have to be within two hexes, um, which I'm probably not going to do. Suppression fire, that's kind of like support fire. Support fire adds to the assault. Suppression fire does a pseudo soak off of an adjacent one. 
Uh, this one, assault. Move one hex maximum to a hex adjacent to an occupied German position. So let's go with A company here, and I'm just going to do this. Okay, and this guy is just going to do this. So we're going to end up with assaults against these two. And this guy will not be able to support. He's out of range, and he's moving too. So he can't really assist with the attack. Um, wow, that's pretty far back. Let's see what we can do here. I think all we're going to do is this. We're just going to go for it. This guy's going to move one. There is a rule when you're within two hexes of a German unit, you can only move one. But hey, I'm only moving one uh, until they're revealed. Uh, let's see, and I will try and resolve when they're revealed here, but this is just a straight on let's march, okay? Oh, I didn't move him. And he could move, I wonder if, if he moves two, he can't assault, so. Subject to German Zock rules, platoons can move up to two hexes, so. That's it. He moves into the Zock. He can't move any further, but next turn he can assault. And he could support if this fails, however it goes. So, we reveal these units. Let's see what they are. That's a real unit. I'm not adjacent to him. Wow, that's a real unit. Do I have any tanks nearby? Yeah, he's going to take a pot shot at that guy. Okay, this isn't promising. Let's see what they are. That's a blank. That's good. That's a three. That means these two can combine here. Uh, pretty strong. Yep, pretty strong. So, uh, but notice this unit has a B on it, so it does, it's not necessarily taken off the board. Instead, it's put in the B resource cup. Okay, so that unit doesn't um, yeah. So, I've revealed all the units. Um, there's nobody here. There's nobody to assault, so these two will combine here. So, let's just see what the next phase is. Resolve combat actions. Okay, how are we doing for time? 32. So, reveal the German unit, if not already revealed, and resolve the combat by taking the following steps. Any suppression fire. Yeah, and none of my units are going to be... I'm going to have this guy attack, this guy attack him, these guys attack him, this guy attacks him. So suppression fire is useful, like, let's say if I had one unit just here and he wanted to assault here, but he was also adjacent to this unit, then he'd have a reduced effectiveness unless another unit could suppress these guys with fire, but I'm not in that situation right now. So all we're going to do is move right across the board here. And uh, let's follow here the attack. Assault resolution for each assault attack. Add the combat value of the assaulting ground units. Add the combat values of assessment assess, assets directory supporting. Uh, any supporting fire. Um, this guy can't because he moved. Because support fire. I can only do one of the following. And since I moved, I can't do support fire. So that's not going to happen. So this looks pretty straight. The only thing we have to look at is um, for the actual unit descriptions, does the MMG section, and these graphics haven't been updated, here we go, the MMG, 2 Vickers 33, effective. Off-board supporting fire if on board, defensive fire only in the German counterattack phase. So it doesn't help with the attack. Doubles combat value of stacked infantry only if attacked by German infantry. So this doesn't help us. So we're going to have to go and there we go. Got to love Word and that table of contents. Um, so we're just going to... And terrain doesn't affect us. I haven't showed that yet, but there is a terrain effects chart. The only terrain that affects anything is stone farmhouse, defensive modern power plus two, woods, and scrub and a church. We're in hedged fields. Welcome to Normandy. So this is a straight three versus three and whoever gets the highest d6 roll. 
<coughs> and this is this is a variable point here. I roll 1d6 and add to my attack strength. Guess what the Germans do the same. So let's see what my, the British attack strength is. Nice. Can't do any better than that. That's a 9. Let's look at the Germans. Add the appropriate combat value. Uh, there are no special rules. It's just an MG unit by itself. Add the defensive value of the train. There isn't anything for that. Uh, there's suppressed. Doesn't apply. It's not suppressed. The artillery didn't work. Roll 1d6. Okay, so the delta will probably be whatever we roll here. So the delta is 2. Um, 3 and 4 is 7. So we got 9 versus 7 is a plus 2. So we come over here, plus 2, and that means the assault is a success. But 1d6, 4 or greater, the company loses an SP. The assaulting units and assets become static. German unit eliminated. Advance after combat. Okay, so let's work this here. I'm going to roll 1d6, 4 or greater. This company loses a strength point. No, they did not. It's 3. It's not 4 or greater. Now, the German unit is eliminated, but if I look at it, it's got a B on it. So it goes to the, not the A cup. Wait, this is the B cup. Yeah, that's because I just put one of those there. So it goes in the B cup. That's fine. Uh, we see A, but this is shuffled. It'll be random when it comes out. Okay, there is advance after combat. But the problem is, it's alting and it was, because it was so close, See, if we'd gotten a plus three or higher, that we wouldn't be static. But now they have to reorganize and recoup, so they flip. And I think both of them are static now. So if we do something here. Um, I think I unmasked this now, so I'm going to do this now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, this doesn't feel like an outpost line. Um, all right, let's. Uh, something happened here, too. So let's move on to this one. We got something interesting here. We have a German ATG, which means there it is. ATG, 79 in fact. As soon as the unit is revealed, immediately targets one hex within three hexes, which contains a British tank. One to three, no effect. Four or five, the, f the f tank becomes static. And a six, it's expended. And we do have a tank right here. So. First off, as soon as this was revealed, poof, takes a shot. Roll to four, come back over here. Four or five. Bummer. The tank is static. Hopefully we can re recover him next turn. On every turn the unit remains in play, it is neither suppressed nor subject to assault. It can attack British tanks. During the assault phase, this unit defends with a value of one if assaulted by infantry, three if supported by tanks. Well, luckily here I have no tanks, so this will be um, a 1. Their defense is a 1. Uh, they are on, it looks like a forest, though. Let's see if that does anything. Woods or scrub, defensive modifier plus 1. So we're going to see that, okay? So let's go back to resolve combat, British. That's that, resolve combat. So the defender, the ATG, does not help. We've got three. So assault, add the combat values of assaulting ground units, three. So assets directly supporting the assault. We learned the ATG doesn't... Uh, well, that's not necessarily true. Let's take a quick look. We looked at the MMG before. Let's look at the ATG. Here it is, 2-6 pound defense. Defensive fire only, German counteract pack phase. Doubles infantry strength if attacked by German tanks in the German counterattack phase. So that's all it's good for. Okay. So that doesn't help us. So it looks like, if I've done this right, uh, common values, uh, common values, assets, no, common values, no support fire, deduct two from the, uh, yeah, we, we're not that, roll 1d6. So we're going to be three plus, three is six. Okay, now, the German though, add the appropriate combat value, it's one. Add the defensive value of the terrain, now it's two. 
It's not suppressed, bummer, and 1d6. So I rolled a 3. I've got to remember this number. I got a 3 and a 3 is 6, and they got a 2 and 1 is 3. Bummer for the Germans. That gives us a 3 delta plus 3. Success. It could take casualties, but the Germans eliminated. We're not static and advance after combat. And again, the German unit has a B on it. So it's going to go into resource pot B. We're going to advance after combat. Nice. So we got two positions, and then we're going to roll five or greater. We lose one SP, though. Nope. Ooh, that was close. But we didn't lose too many units. All right. Making good progress here. Um, get rid of these move markers. Uh, then we move to this guy. And actually, in this case, uh, he can attack him. I can double up on one of these, but neither of them have defensive values. Or I guess I could... Well, no, I can't. Um, this is a different company. Okay. So these two are going to attack him. This one, oh, these two are going to attack him. My bad. So, move this out of the way. The FOO doesn't add anything to us. The ATG doesn't add anything to us. So we've got six. Um, and I think that's it based on what we saw. Six versus three, no terrain modifiers. So let's see what happens here. The Brits roll. 6 and 5 is 11, and the Germans roll 5. That's a plus 6. Plus 5 or more. Success, no losses. Uh, basically uh, cleared them out. So let's go to resource pot B. Put it in there. Forgot where I was attacking. It had to be here, so what do I want to do? Uh, now let's move him up just to get a line. All right, next attack is here. Ooh, we got Churchill's, so we'll look that up. The ATG doesn't help us, but the Churchill potentially does. Let's take a look at that. T -t 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 Churchill effect. Doubles combat value stacked infantry in suppression fire, supporting fires, and assault, period. Awesome. Got that 75 millimeter HE. Infantry support tank, so that's six. Nine to three. So we're going to go a nine plus. <laughs> that's overkill. Nine and six is 15. Three and one is four. That's, I don't even have to look at the chart. That's a B. Goes there. Um, and then advance after combat. Wow, they could have. We'd have to leave the ATG behind, but you can't do that. Can't leave assets flapping in the breeze. So, I'll just keep the line, do that. Just curiosity, see what this is. Okay, yeah, this is a counter I haven't updated. This is a German forward observer. Um, I need to update that. And the last attack, ouch, is a three, double to a six. And they're in this squish squish line. Let's look at that. Let's make sure that isn't there. Open crops, no effect, level two. So we are six to two. So the Brits are six and five is 11. Two and three is five. We've got a six delta. Well, this is a lot better than my last game. Let's see what a six, uh, six delta, that's plus five, that does it. This is a B, though. i got to put this in resource cup B again. And this guy will advance. So, wow. Good job here clearing these out. All right, so that's the end of the British combat resolution. And hopefully some certain person is reviewing this and let me know if I messed anything up. So the next thing we got to do is go to the German counterattack phase. For each German position that has been lost, follow the procedure in paragraph 3-5. Apply the results immediately. And then we have a counterattack table. So let's go to 3-5. And here we go. We're in the outpost line, so we're going to roll for each of these. And either they're mortared or an actual counterattack occurs and units attack. 
So we can just, uh, we got two here, so let's start with this one. Uh, three, four, five, six, two. Let's close this, we don't need this. Nothing happens. Let's go for this one. Four, they're mortared. So if there's a five or six, they become static. That just means mortar fire comes down here, and on a five or six, they become static. They don't. That was close. That would have liked to mobilize most of that company. Okay, so kind of dodged. We got a mortar counterattack here. Now we come to this one. Three. That's another mortar attack. So five or six, they're static. Nope, they're not. And then we got these two. So let's roll for this one. A four. That's a mortar attack. And nothing. And the last one. A three. A mortar attack. And that's nothing. Wow. Would have been exciting to have a counter. Last time I played this, they were repulsed in the middle. And the Germans counterattack and retook this hex here. So there's your comment on replayability. No two games are the same. Um, so now we've done the German counterattack phase. Okay, after that we go to... So yeah, didn't get to work through the counterattack rules, but that's just another resolution here. So the Brits came off pretty good on this first turn here. Line of communication. Uh, let's see, I think they're all LOC. Uh, this may be the case of when I'm static and then I... Yeah, we should be, I mean, they should all go back here. If I come here, that's a lot easier to look at the rules with that table of contents. British units must retain unbroken LOC. LOC is traced from the British units hex to the northern map edge. The start line, the LOC can be any length. It cannot be traced to an occupied German position hex or a German Zock, which, if they're unexposed, is two hexes. can be traced through German positions that have been captured. But we're not. Everybody, we're all good. So, good job. We're in good shape. Next thing is flank progress. Here we go. After completing the German counterattack phase, check for the flanking battalions. Roll 1d6. 1 to 2, 3 to 5, 1 hex, 6. Okay, let's roll for the left flank. Ouch, they're doing pretty good. Well, no, that's 3 to 5. So they're on the board at the one spot. And the right flank, they're on the board at the one spot. But we've actually, we're in good shape. Even if they'd rolled a six, they would have been on the two spot. We would have been fine. We're actually doing better than our neighboring um, battalions. And now we're in the operations interface. Remove smoke markers, which I didn't take advantage of. Remove artillery mortar suppression markers. Well, I would, but they all failed. Sure, the VP track is updated, including flank checks uh, if required, and move the game turn marker one turn first. Uh, let's see, British VPs, positive three VP for the hexes mark three, five, and they call that bacon. Eggs is the further one, five VPs, and then five VPs for each platoon that exits the southern map edge while clear, having a clear LOC. And then one BP for each German unit eliminated. Nobody was eliminated permanently, so that doesn't happen. Um, so there's no change in VPs. Uh, so I think uh, we're good. So the only thing I got left to do for this, and then I'll end the play, is move to game two. Game turn two. So actually this was a really successful, in my experience, well, based on my previous experience, this is a lot more successful than my last playthrough. Uh, they've almost cleared the outpost line, and they got no meaningful counterattacks. Uh, one company, I think, did lose one strength point. No, I don't think any of them did either. So, yeah, this was successful. Now we got to get these static units. Oh, this guy should be static. Yeah, he is. Okay. Got to get these static units moving again. But we got rid of the ATG, too. So, yeah, that's it. So that is the end of doing the setup and the first turn of the upcoming game Start Hearts by Tiny Battle Publishing. So thanks for watching, and we may come back for turn two.